four, I think. Pick four. Frederick Douglass spent his childhood among the boatyards of Fells Point, where he illegally learned to read at the age of eight. Frederick Douglass's handwritten autobiography, posted outside where he lived, the house is long gone, so is the historical marker. When you kind of change the focal length or the focus point of history, you kind of can see it beyond like stuff turning into like myth. Um, so we have the myth of the lost cause. We have the myth of the founding fathers. We have the myth of American exceptionalism. And now that we're telling broader stories, we're challenging those myths. And I think that's where a lot of the pushback comes from. Right here on Saran Street, you know, this is one of the, the last alley streets in West Baltimore. You know, so to say you want to come in and tear them down because they're old, they were built in 1870. And so you look at them and say they're old, but they're not dilapidated. On January 1st, 2015, shortly after the Freddie Gray riots here in Baltimore City, and the Freddie Gray riots happened in my neighborhood, we decided, uh, and I decided, that we would come here and request of the mayor and the city of Baltimore to take the two statues down that were here. They were the Andrew, uh, the Jackson Lee statues. We are sitting in a plaza that was created, a, a, what we call the lost cause mythology, uh, to rationalize the idea that uh, slavery was, not, was a benign institution. And the idea of fighting white supremacy is also trying to fight and debunk the lost cause mythology. And by doing so, the removing of these monuments is so important to that effort. You hadn't had told me back when I was a kid that this would be the inevitable end result. I wouldn't really have believed it because of how people responded to its presence when I was young. I, mean, I was literally in an art school when I was like, this is everything, you know, and I didn't have one professor back then be like, oh, okay, yeah, we get it. We see where this is. There's something here. I think we're seeing a rise in people making the conscious decision to um, wake up because they're tired of how history has painted um, certain marginalized groups. And I think people are realizing how important it is for us to reclaim the narrative because if we don't tell our story, then who will? And we feel they should not be celebrating the fact that they lost the war. As a matter of fact, when we did our homework on this location, we had found out that years and years in a row that the daughters of the Confederacy used to be at this very location. And during the Martin Luther King holiday celebration, they would always be here celebrating Jackson and Lee, uh, I guess in opposition to Martin Luther King. So I guess that kind of incensed me and me being a civil rights leader, I like taking on hot issues. It's, it, it's no care when it comes to the black community. When you look at Reservoir Hill, you know, um, they come in and they preserve. And in and, and Poppleton, they came in and they bulldozed. You know, and that's the difference that I see in Federal Hill. You go over to Federal Hill, everything is preserved, but when I go over to Federal Hill and see a house that resembles my home and the value, you know, they could sell ass for 400,000, 500,000, and you tell me mine is worth 60. It's a problem with that. Um, it's challenging these myths and these stories that people hold so dearly to their identity. And now other people are getting a chance to tell their stories and maybe some of their myths. And it's like, we're getting a broader picture, but some of that change comes with conflict. 
you know, history is history. You have to uh, retain history as best you can, but you got to tell the right story. And these monuments were not telling the right story. There was no reason for us to celebrate what they had done. They were fighting to keep slavery. Uh, so they lost the war, thank goodness they lost. Uh, and I'm glad we end up taking the statues down. And I'm glad I played a small role in requesting as the community president that it be taken down. If I could write history, the type of approach I would take is using history as a tool for justice. I think that we should use history, the facts, what is shown to us, but also using what we have experienced and combining that with the facts to justify making a decision. Frederick Douglass's education was shut down. So he pinched bread from the cupboard so he could pay white kids teach him the skills that would lead to him becoming one of the greatest orators in America, advocating for the freedom of the enslaved. You know, it's, it's, it's time for black people to wake up and start realizing what we possess and fight for it, you know, to display our history. You know, where's the monuments for us?